Gareth shovels with the regularity of a marching soldier. His face, too, is as a soldier's. Still, Gareth freezes, then turns slowly to... I'm digging my own parents' graves. Gareth moves to continue his task, but his cadence falters. He pauses. He nods. At least, you think he nods. His head moves so... You speak truth. I've seen Seeker's blood seeping into the sand. I just didn't know. I didn't know what darkness lied beyond pain. Now... I know the culprits. Dallas's pets. Such helpful tools they are, too. They're still there, spreading their rancid smell through the house. Paladins came to clean up the mess. In the name of Lucian, they say, and they seem to believe it. Gareth shies away from you. His eyes pass over the half-filled graves, and he takes a shuddering breath. I'm... I'm the one who has prayed. An endless litany. How many pleas does it take? How many tears do I have to shed? Gareth forcefully exhales and looks past you to the nearby house. You fear he might snap the shovel's handle in two. I've got no use for empty platitudes. You swear you hear Gareth's pulse, galloping faster than a saddled mount. If you want to help, then you find the craven white that ordered their slaughter. Anyone that stands between you and truth. No matter the flag they fly or creed they follow, make them bleed! His hand moves from his shovel to his sword. He wipes his forefinger along the blade, opening a bloody gash. He stares at the wound, then wipes the blood across his glistening forehead. Go to the house. Bring me the truth. The two paladins Gareth mentioned are arguing in front of the door to the modest farmstead. We're guarding this house. They didn't kill anybody. The magisters who controlled them did. You know, but they did turn her. And now she's not Donna anymore. Get it? No, wait! Surely, maybe... The other magister rolls his eyes and shakes his... In any event, it's our business, not yours. You, you can't do that. These... they were people who were loved. It's not right to butcher them like cattle. You... you're right. Here, take the key. We'll... we'll leave you to it. I don't want to see Donna like that again. You'll remember her as she was, Jad. The real her. Paladin William nods his thanks to you. And with a last sorrow-filled glance at the house, Paladin Jad turns to follow his companion away. But... uh Fine. The corners of Gareth's mouth slant upwards, so too do his eyebrows. They still live. If you cannot see them slain, then I will. I pray that you suffer. I pray that you burn. You deserve only pain. Gareth is a tempest. He yanks open dresser drawers, then slams them shut. He opens books, then violently tosses them to the floor. Don't just stand there. Look! Those... those atrocities don't act on their own. You know this as well as anyone. Someone had to give the order, and they'll have left some sign, some clue telling us who they are. They always do. The Whites are so proud of their cruelty, so satisfied with themselves. Gareth grunts and returns to his frenzied search. The spirit watches Gareth in sadness as he rummages through the house. 
I hate seeing him this way. I wish I could reach out to him. Tell him how proud we've always been. Tell him to be at peace. Nothing we didn't see coming. We always knew Gareth was fated for greatness. As a boy, he'd leap through the fields with wooden sword in hand, slaying imaginary demons, protecting us from whatever evil he would dream up. We also knew that good men make enemies. We knew evil would come, and so it did. Not as a demon or as a witch, but as a man Gareth once knew as a friend. Jonathan. He watched eagerly as those shambling husks descended. It seemed like a game to him. Like theatre, we would never blame Gareth. The righteous always pay a price. May the Seven will it. He will always be the hero we know him to be. We always want to believe in each other. It's what separates us from the Void. It's what makes our existence worthwhile. It's what we do next that defines us. We can respond with treachery, or we can rise above. Tell me you found something. What? This. This is what trust has brought me. Not peace, not friendship, not the Seven's graces, just Death. Gareth takes quick, tiny paces, back and forth, back and forth. Then he smiles, a thin, frightening smile. We both know what comes next. You'll see Jonathan dead, and you'll bring me proof. Gareth holds his hands up to his face. Dirt clings to the underside of his nails. Grooves on his palm remain from his agitated digging. The self-inflicted wound on his finger is encrusted with blood. Do it, then. The way is bad. Find safety somewhere else. Suspicious, he examines the document. On realizing it's real, he hands it back, then stands to attention. I apologize. I didn't know. Admission granted. Relieved, he gives you a stiff salute. Eyes forward. Don't toy with me, sorcerer. You know where your mistress is, and I know you know it, so talk. A plot twist! <laughs> I love it! Keeps things interesting! Damn you! Damn all of Gareth acknowledges you with a menacing glare. I couldn't have expected better. Gareth holds the ring mere inches from his eye, turning it, inspecting it for some unknown truth. Once you see the world for what it really is, there is no unseeing it. It's amazing, really, the lies we tell ourselves. The lies we tell others. Until later, Godwoken, may you too know truth. Thank you. 